Hello everyone. In this lecture of the communication theory course, we'll be explaining delta modulation. We will start with discussing the motivation for delta modulation, and then we will show the structure and the operation of the encoder and decoder of delta modulation. Delta modulation is a special case of differential pulse code modulation. If you recall, in differential pulse code modulation, we used to find a difference signal and then quantize that difference signal. Delta modulation is a special case of such modulation type. This is to remind you of the differential pulse code modulation. We had a, an encoder in which we calculate the difference signal based on the difference between the incoming signal and a prediction and that prediction is even based on the, the quantized difference and that quantized difference is, obta difference is obtained from the quantizer and in general our quantizer has a small step and it has as many levels as dictated by the number of bits to represent those levels if we have r bits then we can have up to 2 power r levels in delta modulation we have a very special case in which we have a one bit quantizer or a single bit quantizer so we have quantization using only one bit which means that we will have only two levels However, in order to have two levels, that means that the signal that will be quantized should be very small in amplitude so that it can be quantized in only two levels. So in order for that signal to be very small, and of course we are talking about the difference signal, that difference signal should be very small. So the difference between successive samples should be very small, which means we might need to perform oversampling so that samples are close to each other that is achieved by a smaller sampling interval that's why we call it oversampling so that the difference between samples is sufficiently small that such that such that that difference is quantized in only two levels however wouldn't oversampling result in a higher bit rate it would because the bit rate, if you remember, it was equal to the number of bits per sample times the sampling rate. The higher the sampling rate, the higher the bit rate, which is not preferred as we discussed before. However, such increase in the sampling interval, in the sampling frequency, is compensated by the lowest va possible value of R, which is one bit in this case. So, as we will see, such oversampling will not result in a significant increase in the bit rate because it is compensated by decreasing the number of bits per sample. So, this is the first thing that is special about delta modulation, that the quantizer is a one-bit quantizer. And the second is that our predictor is a first-order predictor which means it is simply a single delay element, a single time delay element, which results in a delay of one sample, or equivalently, it, is, it results a delay of TS. So now our quantized estimate of the message at the receiver is the summation of the received quantized difference plus our estimate, for which our estimate is simply the previous sample. So at time k, the decided message, the message that we assume that is the original message or the original value of the sample at such time is equal to the previous decision, the previous estimate added to it the received difference. So what about the previous value of the message mq of k minus 1 wouldn't it be calculated as also mq of k minus 2 plus dq 
of k minus 1 and then this term is added here and what about mq of k minus 2 it will be mq of k minus 3 plus dq of k minus 3 and so on until we reach the very initial sample which might be initialized by 0 then we will be left with only the added values of d at time k and k minus 1 and k minus 2 until originally at time 0. So we can say that the first order predictor results in that our message is just the accumulation of the difference signals. So at time k, the message mq of k is just the accumulation of all the previous received quantized differences from time zero up till the current time. That, of course, results in that the decoder for the delta modulation is very simple. It will be just an accumulator. So we can see here that the encoder is similar to the encoder of the differential pulse code modulation, except that our predictor is replaced by a single delay element, a special case of a general linear predictor, and the quantizer is a one bit or two level quantizer. And of course, you remember that this gray part is similar to the decoder, and as we just derived, it is equivalent to an accumulator. Here is our decoder in which again we have our predictor as single delay element and hence our m hat sub q of k is just m q of k minus 1. Consequently, we might see that the implementation of the delta modulation encoder and the decoder are as follows. On top we can see the encoder and at the bottom we see the decoder. Let's start with the decoder. We just mentioned that the decoder is equivalent to an accumulator. So this is our accumulator or this is the symbol of our accumulator. It might have some amplification as well that will not change the signal. However, we accumulate, we keep accumulating the received quantized differences to get the quantized message and then this low pass filter has nothing to do with the delta modulation itself it is here for the reconstruction of the signal from its samples so this is a reconstruction low pass filter so that our output here is our continuous message and of course since we have quantization this message will have slight distortion with relative to the original message. However, if that quantization error is as low as desired, that distortion will be negligible. So our decoder is mainly this part, the accumulator. That's why in the encoder, the feedback or the lower branch, which was similar to the decoder, is just this accumulator. This accumulator can be expressed as an accumulator if we are accumulating discrete samples or equivalently it's an integrator if we integrate based on continuous signal rather than discrete signal. Of course, our quantized signal is a digital signal. However, if you recall, our quantizer might result in an output in the form of staircase output. So, this is how we can interpret using an integrator because its input is a staircase continuous signal. However, it performs the function that we just described, which is the function of the accumulator. And the difference is the difference between the incoming message and the quantized estimate of the message. And since now we have this feedback resulting in a continuous function 
still a staircase function but a continuous function so we might use such a difference with an input equal to the continuous message so what happens to sampling we postpone sampling to after the quantization and again we might show that this is equivalent either we quantize either we sample the signal first discretize the signal first and then calculate the difference or we can calculate the difference and then discretize that difference it will both will result in the same so here we have the difference signal d of t and it would be input to our quantizer however remember our quantizer is a one bit quantizer a two levels quantizer so if we have two levels like this so how would we decide if a sample will go to the upper level or to the lower level we compare with a threshold at the middle of these two levels and if the sample is below that threshold we go to the lower level if it's above it we go to the upper level so we have a single comparison with a single threshold value so our quantizer is equivalent to a comparator which compares with zero level zero volts to result in an output either a value of delta over two or negative delta over two so as if we have a mid-rise quantizer with only two levels and those two levels are at delta over two and negative delta over two and these are what are expressed by e and the negative e in this figure so after sampling we have our quantized difference in this form it is either a sample with value delta over two or a sample with value of a sample of value negative delta over two let's work out an example together as we did with the differential pulse code modulation let's assume as we can see we have both the encoder and the decoder we have sampled message m of k with sample values 0 0.15.37 and so on and we have delta equal to 0.2 of course in the case of delta modulation our encoder has a quantizer which is a mid-rise quantizer so our levels are in this case delta over 2 and the negative delta over 2 so our levels will be 0.1 and the negative 0.1 volts as we did with the differential pulse code modulation initially the best is uh, the estimate is equal to zero and then the difference is the difference between m of k and mq which is zero in this case the quantized version will be unfortunately we don't have a level at zero so we have to decide whether we will represent by level 0.1 or negative 0.1 this is at the threshold so we can arbitrarily choose any of the, the two levels let's assume that we always go with the higher level so the quantized value will be 0.1 and again the output here is the summation of dq and the previous estimate so it will be these two values added together so that's 0.1 and this 0.1 will be our next estimate so now the difference will be 0.15 minus 0.1 which is 0.05 this 0.05 is above the threshold is positive so our output level is 0.1 and again our mq will be 0.2 the summation of this 0.1 and this 0.1 and again this will be the next quantized prediction the, dif the next difference will be 0.17 which is positive so we go to level 0.1 and here we have 0.3 that will be our next estimate then the difference will be 0.2 as you can see the quantization is very simple because it is threshold based and this threshold is even at zero so 
either the signal is positive or the difference is positive or negative. If it's positive, we go to level 0.1. If it's negative, we go to level negative 0.1. So this is 0.4, which results 0.4 here, and the difference becomes 0.01. We shouldn't, we, we don't need to worry about whether this value is closer to the upper level or the lower level. Again, it's comparison with zero. So it would be 0.1, and here we get a value of 0.5, which becomes our next estimate. So now the difference is negative 0.27, which results in quantization in level negative 0.1, and we get here 0.4. So that the next step we have the difference here negative 0.3, which is quantized in the lower level negative 0.1, and then we have here 0.3 and so on. So our transmitted signal will be this differential signal. And as described before, it is either 0.1 or negative 0.1. So for this specific example, we have the output here is 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then negative 0.1 and negative 0.1. Let's now discuss an important type of quantization errors that might happen because of delta modulation. Let's assume that we have some signal like this, and this signal is quantized by delta modulation. As we can expect after quantization, the differential output of the signal might look like this. We have delta over 2, delta over 2, delta over 2, delta over 2, and then at this time instant, the signal starts decreasing, so we have a sample like this. We might have another sample like this, and then it becomes, starts increasing again, then decreasing, 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 and at this step, it starts increasing, and so on, so it keeps increasing. And then starting here, it starts decreasing. So this is roughly the quantized different signal that will be transmitted. At the receiver side, the decoder will perform accumulation of the signal. So if we assume we initially start at here, then we accumulate a positive sample, so we have delta over 2 and then we keep holding or this value keeps at its value until the next sample arrives at which another accumulation happens and then it keeps constant until the next sample arrives so we have something like this and then we have to accumulate this and only at this time instant the accumulation is by negative so we have some decreasing function and then another one. So we have an decreasing function. Then here we have an increasing function or a step up. And then we have three steps down followed by one step up here. So we keep doing like this. And then the signal starts decreasing here. So we have continuous decrease by our step like this. What we can notice here at this part of the signal is that the original signal was decreasing quickly. So the slope of the signal here was a very large slope. 
However, since at each step every TS, let's zoom on this signal right here. So we have something like this. At each step, so we have a decision to accumulate the new DQ every TS. So the step width is TS. And then we decide either to decrease it by delta over 2 or increase it by delta over 2. So actually the increase or decrease itself is for the value of delta. So it is from delta over 2 to negative delta over 2. So we have this step is proportional to delta. So if the signal decreases, the original signal decreases very fast compared to this possible decrease, we have what we call slope overload. Because in this case, the signal, the decoded signal, cannot track the original signal. So in order to avoid this, we have to adjust either delta or TS accordingly. So in order to express this, we have to put a condition such that the slope of m of t is not larger than the slope of the quantized signal. However, again, the slope of the quantized signal is proportional to the change of delta over Ts, so that will be delta over Ts. What is the slope of m of t? This is the first derivative of m of t with respect to t, and we don't want it to be large, so it should be less than or equal delta over Ts. So this is the condition to avoid slope overload. So, in order to avoid the slope overload, we can either make our step size larger or we need to make our TS smaller. The problem of making TS smaller, that means that the sampling frequency, again, remember sampling frequency is 1 over TS. So, a smaller TS means larger FS. And we have already did oversampling. So in order to increase the sampling even more, that will affect the bit rate by an increase. So, so we might not prefer to decrease TS. So the other way to achieve that, to, to avoid the slope overload, is to increase the value of delta until we achieve this condition. However, also increasing the value of delta has a drawback. In order to see that drawback, let's draw the error signal. So the error signal is the difference between the original signal and the staircase decided signal, as we drew a while ago. So we have the error in this form. Of course, you can notice here another type of error, which results from the difference between the actual initial value of the signal and the initial value of the decoder. However, this can be easily adjusted so that we get rid of this error. And also we can here see a large difference or a large error coming from the slope overload that we are trying to avoid by putting the condition that the derivative of m of t with respect to t is no longer is no larger than or is less than or equal delta over ts however we also find the error here or the approximation here it's not large in value we call it granular noise or granular error and this comes from the actual value between the signal and the decoded signal. However, this error has a maximum value of delta over 2. That's right. 
because we quantize either to the upper level or to the lower level. So the maximum quantization error is delta over two. So the larger the delta, the larger the granular error. And of course, the larger the delta, the larger the power of quantization, which is delta squared over 12. So again, we have here some trade-off. In order to avoid the slope overload, you have to increase delta to a certain value. However, we shouldn't increase it more than needed because increasing delta increases with it the quantization noise error or more specifically the granular quantization noise error. In summary, this lecture introduced delta modulation as a special case of differential pulse code modulation. We saw the structure of the encoder and decoder of delta modulation as well as practical implementations for such encoder and decoder and we knew how to design the quantizer step size such that to avoid the slope overload and to achieve the acceptable granular noise.